Welcome, welcome everybody. Um, I had a good question in class yesterday and I wanted to make a video because this helps me remember it as well. Let me know if this is helpful, um, but we were talking about reliability. And to understand reliability, we need to also understand test theory. And with test theory, the idea is, is that the observed score, okay, and there's a lot of confusing language used in statistics and measurement and so forth. So let me, it's helpful for me to really kind of um, be explicit with this, but the observed score is the score that we see. It's the score that we, uh, that our clients or subjects make and we see on a test, okay? So whether it's a MMPI or if it's an IQ test or what have you, that is the actual score that we see is what is observed. But that's not the true score according to test theory. There is a true score, okay? But the observed score is the true score plus error variance. Now, error can be caused by distractions. Uh, the, the client is taking the test and they're distracted. Um, their level of motivation for taking the test. And uh, the test design could be poor. Um, uh, remember, we talked about vague questions being a big source of error. A vague question, meaning that on one day, in particular, we're talking about test retest reliability, one week you read a question and interpret it one way, but then the next week you interpret it a completely different way. Um, so test design can play a role in creating error. And there's gonna be error in every test, okay? Because we can't control for distractions and the client's motivation and all the, uh, we try our best with test design, okay? So the observed score is what we actually see. Let's say somebody scored a 108 on their IQ, okay? They would say that, all right, well, there is a true score, but um, that that observed score is true plus the error that's involved. Now, theoretically, we could get a true score by having a client take a test repeatedly so, uh, and actually it would be an infinite number of times and then take the mean, get the average of that infinite number of times. Now, of course, we're not gonna have uh, somebody take a test infinite number of times, but with some tests, if you take it three or four times and then you get the average, we're probably getting closer to a true score, okay? Uh, so anyway, Let's look at this in terms of the formula that we saw in the book. We've got our reliability, and I'm gonna use the words here that reliability estimate expresses the relationship between the true and observed scores. Okay, so our little r is our reliability estimate. And our true score, which is actually, our true score here is going to be the observed score minus the error. Okay, you're going to see that down here in our example. The true score will be the true score, uh, uh, yeah, the, the observed score minus the error. Okay, and then of course the observed score is what we see here. It's the true score plus the error, okay? So let's, uh, we're, we're just going to assume that we know um, a true score of, is 40, okay, for whatever test this is. The true score is 40. The error variance is four, and we uh, what we're going to do is subtract the error variance. We get 36. We're going to divide by the observed score, and this gives us 0 0.90, okay? So now that's a good reliability coefficient. That's strong, particularly in behavioral health, uh, when we're looking at a test retest, uh, say on the... Um, uh, Beck depression inventory or some type of behavioral method measure, um, that, you know, this would be considered a reliable test, meaning that um, we're fairly consistent, that, that the uh, subjects or the clients were fairly consistent in how they answered in week one and then in week two. And the way that this is expressed, and I'm going to give the link, I was using some wording from an example, but the link is a little obscure, so I don't know who to credit, but I will put the link in the, uh, the comment box below, is that 90% of the test variance is attributable to true score differences, okay? And only 
only 10% of the test variance was due to error. And in the behavioral health, we're okay with, uh, you know, uh, ours, uh, the reliability coefficient above 0.7 or so with behavioral method things, you know, personality inventories, anxiety, depression, and so forth. Uh, we're okay with that. So I hope this helps in kind of understanding um, what reliability is doing, understanding the test theory, uh, and uh, hopefully that helps explain some of this. Let me know, and we'll, we'll talk with you soon.